जय श्री कृष्ण वी आर इन द सिक्स पासुरम ऑफ गोदा गोदा देवी इज द अवतारा ऑफ भूमि माता भूमा देवी इज अवतारा भूमा देवी इन ऑर्डर टू हेल्प ऑल हर चिल्ड्रन दैट इज ऑल ऑफ अस हु find it difficult to understand the detailed uh, puranas detailed itihasas vedas shastras everything she asked bhagavan for a lagu upaya what is the solution how can my children reach you in the simplest way possible so you will have to tell them that you know it's very similar to the sahasranama after reciting all the thousand names uh mata parvati is asking um uh, bhagwan shiva like what is the lagu upaya how can those who, no, who are not able to receive uh, you know repeat all the thousand names of you what is the simplest way they can reach uh, bhagwan how can they remember all these thousand names and then uh, lord shiva says shri rama 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 you know they asked him to repeat rama 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 three times so there is always a simpler way which mata tries to find for us because her children she wants them to reach get the best and if they are not able to do whatever is required even then some way or the other she wants to help us out right so goda devi our bhumi mata took this incarnation just for our sake she asked bhagwan during the varaha avatar when bhagwan rescued bhuma devi as to what all we have to do and whatever bhagwan told there she condensed it into just 30 simple songs and as if it's in the seed format she has fed us all these information in very very simple terms so that we can implement it in our life our acharyas have said that this is the sara of all the vedas vedam anaitukum vitt they say this is the seed of all the vedas you can see a lot of leelas you know which are uh, mentioned in shrimad bhagavata purana also we can see a lot of krishna charitram rama charitam the secret information which is embedded in many many itihasas puranas you know are mentioned in tirupavai so all what we need to know is given by goda mata out of her affection for us we are now in the sixth pasuram of the 30 pasurams so the first five pasurams of the tirupavai are the first section of it goda herself says i aindum aindum you know the tirupavai comprises of Five times five plus five, she says. So the first five have got completed. Now we are in the sixth pasuram. So what did we learn in the first five? Goda, in the very first song, told us what exactly is the purpose of what we are taking up. She says, "Nara yena ne namakke parai tarvan." that bhagavan narayana will give us mokshananda itself you know he will give us the ultimate gift which is parai which is moksham who will give narayana will give to whom will he give namakke to all of us so that bhagavan narayana will grant us moksha moksha mitche janardana we say right so goda tells that in the very first song the divine way of calling a song is pasuram so i will be using the term pasuram so in the first pasuram goda says that narayana will give all of us the ultimate moksha after that she speaks about the do's and don'ts of the vrata that all the girls of the ayar padi as we call in tamil the gokula brindavana the vraja bhumi all of them undertake in order to reach bhagavan krishna she tells the elders that if we follow this vrata huge rains will shower and nature will be at its best all our crops will grow very well we will get all what we want so that the elders permit these kids 
to go and have the vrata. Remember, our Goda is just a five-year-old little girl when she composed the entire Tirupavai. So elders permit them to do this vrata. So she instructs the rain god, Arimare Kanna. She sees Krishna as the Antaryami of the uh, uh, Varunadeva also. So she says, you have to, you know, rain to the appropriate extent so that it does good for everybody. It has to be very, very positive rains. It has to be at the appropriate time that you should pour. So she gives all the instructions to rain god. And then the beautiful two Vibhava avataras of Bhagavan in the third and the fifth Pasuram were mentioned. Ongi Ulagaland Uttaman Perpadi says Andar, where she speaks about the Trivikrama avatara of Bhagavan. And in the fifth Pasuram, she speaks about our little Krishna's Dhamodara Leela. So till this, we've actually enjoyed it. And in the process of explaining each of this avatara, Goda has brought in a lot of the names of Bhagavan in each of her song. In the first Pasuram, she said, Narayanane Namakke Paraitaruan. So, Bhagavan's name as Narayana was used in the first Pasuram. In the second Pasuram, Parkadalul Payyattu Gindra Paraman Adipadi, she said. So, in the Parkadal, in the Kshirabdi, Bhagavan lies down. So, Paraman Adipadi, let's worship his feet. Let's sing about the greatness of Bhagavan's divine feet as he lies down in the Shirabdi. In the third, she speaks about Ongi Ulagalanda Uttaman, you know, that Bhagavan who measured all the worlds just by stretching his legs. He did not even step, just by stretching his leg. He measured all the worlds above, all the worlds below. And for the third feet, he had absolutely no place to even place his feet. Ongi Ulagalanda Uttaman Perpadi. Let's sing the greatness of his name. So she brings the importance, significance of Nama Sankirtana right there. In the fourth Pasaram, she speaks about Kanna. Arimarai Kanna. Undrani Kai Karavel. Padmanabhan Kayil. So two beautiful names of Bhagavan is brought about in the fourth Pasaram where she speaks about our little darling Kanna, who is the Antaryami of everybody, including the rain god. And she's also speaking about Padmanabha. You know, from Bhagavan's Nabi Kamalam came the Chaturmukha Brahma, right? From the lotus, which springs from the navel of Bhagavan, the Chaturmukha Brahma was born. So that deity is called Padmanabha. She worships Bhagavan as Padmanabha. In the fifth pasuram, the pasuram prior to what we are going to look now, she said, Dhamo dharane, Yamunai Tureivane, that Bhagavan, who was having all kinds of sportive activities beside the river Yamuna, Tuya Piranir Yamuna, you know, that sacred, beautiful river Yamuna, which became the Sarva. Anga Tirtha of Bhagavan, you know, when Ganges, Ganga Devi, Mata Ganga is worshipped. Why is she worshipped? Because she had the Tirvadi Samandam of Bhagavan, you know, she touched the feet of Bhagavan when Bhagavan did his Trivikrama Avatara. Therefore, she became so sacred that we are worshipping her even today. Think of Yamuna. Bhagavan played there. Bhagavan washed his hands there. Bhagavan gurgled the water of Yamuna Tirtha. During the Kalinga Nardana, Bhagavan jumped deep inside Yamuna, spent hours together inside the water, and the water was surrounding Bhagavan in all directions where Bhagavan was submerged in it. What can we speak of her purity? Are the words even sufficient to express the greatness of Yamuna Nadi? So, Yamunai Turei Banai, Ayar Kulatinil Tondrum, Ani Vilakkai, Tayai Kudal Vilakam Say the Dhamodara Nai. That kind of Dhamodara who even took up the punishment from his mother because he is Bhakta Paradina Bhagavan. He loves to be defeated by his devotees. 
that is our great Bhagavan Krishna. Now, with all this background, Bhagavan Krishna has many more leelas which we can enjoy. So, Goda goes on to the sixth pasuram. We are now coming to the next section of Tirpavai. From the sixth to the fifteenth section is the second section where Goda starts to wake up the different devotees. There are around five lakh households in the Vrajabhumi, and Goda takes ten samples so that she addresses people of different categories as a representation of the five black people there which is inclusive of all of us you know the different behavior different ways we all think is all incorporated and so many so many learnings are brought out you know from the daily things we should do all the way to how we can reach bhagavan so this pasuram Pullum silam binagan pullarayan koval. It is there in my profile for those of who want to refer to the pasuram as I explain. So she brings out a lot of lessons. So she is waking up the 10 gopikas of the Vrajabhumi. Come, let's get up. Let's do this vrata for Bhagavan Krishna. So the situation is this. The previous evening, Krishna had told all the gopikas. Look, all of you have to now go, retire, sleep. We all will meet tomorrow morning and we will start the vrata. Now, Krishna has also gone back home. You know, Napina is a, he has gone back home. Now, Goda and other gopikas have to get up the next day morning. And they are going home, but they are not able to sleep. Just think about it. Even when we have an examination next morning, and you know we are a little anxious about the examination or we have a project you know go live the next day we are anxious about the project our sleep will be like so disturbed we will not be able to focus or we will not be able to sleep till we actually go there and complete our work now think about the most important thing which we can have not just in this birth, but in any of the births that we've ever had. The most important thing, having a darshan of the ultimate Paramatma, spending time with him, being with him, playing with him. All of them are looking forward to that moment of their life, thinking of what this great experience is going to be like. Can they sleep? So Goda is so eagerly waiting to see Krishna. All the gopikas there are eagerly waiting. They are not even able to sleep. So some of these gopikas are awake, waiting as to when they can really go and, you know, have the darshan, be with Bhagavan, start this vrata. While there are some other gopikas who are actually sleeping. So we will get into how come some of them were able to sleep in a bit. So this pasuram is given during that circumstance where the pasuram goes as Pullum silambinagan pullarayan koil vellai vilichangin peraravam ketilayo pillai yarandirai peimulai nanjund kalla chagadam kalakkariya kalochi vellattaravil tuilamanda vittinai ullattu kondu munivargalum yogigalum Milla yerund ariendra pererabam ullam puhund kulundelor empavai. The overall, the overview meaning of this is the birds are flying and chipping. You can see that, right? Can't you hear the huge sound which comes from the Shanka, the Shankanata? It's blowing in the temple of Bhagavan, who is the Lord of Garuda. He himself is the chief of these birds. Now, girls, wake up. Bhagavan drank the poison of Putana. She came in the form of a mother. Bhagavan, just by stretching his legs, killed the demon Shakatasura. He reclined on the Adishesha in Sri Rabdi. He is the seed cause of this entire cosmos. All the sages meditate on this Bhagavan. 
and they carry whatever they do as a divine service for him when they get up in the morning slowly they wake up and recite the names of hari very very loudly and let that name cool all of us let that refresh all of us so this is the overview meaning a very very high level meaning of this pasuram as usual a lot of very detailed meanings have been established by our purvacharyas so i was telling you that many of them including andal and few of her sakis are just not able to sleep they are waiting when will we able to go there have the darshan spend time with bhagavan what kind of an experience will this be while a few others are happily lying down and sleeping how come does that mean that the latter are not as excited to worship bhagavan how are they able to sleep while andal and the few others are not able to sleep what is the difference this is very very beautifully explained that there are two different types of nishtas two different practices that people follow some are kaikaryan nishta which means that they are impatient to serve bhagavan and they want to do it then and there that twara that urgency to serve bhagavan is there they are really vigilant come what may i have to do it then and there while others have so much of confidence that they are able to meditate on bhagavan and have the anubhuti of bhagavan so they are called as guna nishtas they are able to contemplate on the auspicious qualities of bhagavan and enjoy his virtues in their mind itself so they are able to sleep because they have so much on so much of faith on bhagavan so this is called as adhyavasaya to the lord he is the upaya he will take care you know he knows what he should do so i have that confidence in him so i am not worried i can sleep so these are the two different groups both of them are ultimately devoted you know for them everything is bhagavan so these two groups of devotees are equated to lakshmana and bharata both were brothers of bhagavan sri rama when bhagavan rama was asked to go to the forest lakshmana could not even think about staying in the palace without serving bhagavan everything else all the luxuries of the palace you know his life as a prince everything looked as if they were nothing when his dear rama was not there he felt that you know going behind rama to the forest was the greatest wealth and all the riches the materialistic riches which the world usually thinks as riches were nothing at all for lakshmana so he rushed along with rama even when rama said no lakshmana be here you don't have to follow me lakshmana refused he decided that he wanted to follow rama do whatever was in his capacity to do uh, be of service he did not even want to sleep he did not even want anything else just be with rama serve bhagwan rama right so this is kaikarya nishta where he is impatient to serve bhagwan do every sort of kaikaryam to bhagwan vigilant you know that twara that urgency to do kaikarya was always visible in lakshmana think about bharata bharata was also a brother of bhagwan sri rama he went along with everybody in ayodhya requesting bhagwan sri rama to come back but bhagwan refused instead he gave his paduka and said that bharata should continue you know ruling where paduka will guide so bharata listened to the words of sri rama he went back resided in naimisharanya and resided you know he did not even enter uh, ayodhya he was just in outside ayodhya he was contemplating on bhagavan he made paduka rule the kingdom instead of he ruling the kingdom 
he was still subservient to Bhagavan Rama, but then he listened to every word of Bhagavan Rama. He enjoyed the time they had spent together. He contemplated, meditated on the divine qualities and the virtues of Bhagavan Rama for 14 long years and patiently waited. Right. So the second group of people are parallel to the Gunanishta. They are like Bharata. So both are ultimately devotees. The former is the Kainkarya Nishta, while the latter is the Guna Nishta. That is why we see two different groups of people. So because of this kind of interpretation, the Pasuram starting from this very Pasuram, the sixth Pasuram, all the way to the 15th, are looked at as, you know, showing some of the qualities of some of the Alvar, some of the Acharya, some of the Bhagavatas. And it's considered as waking up the Bhagavatas or it's considered as a Tirupalyarchi. It's like a Supravatam to the Bhagavatas themselves. So this is subject to many different interpretations which have been you know, written by many of our uh, Acharyas, Purvacharyas earlier. In fact, this particular Pasuram, our Acharya say, is uh, dedicated to Goda's father, Vishnu Chitta or Periyalvar, because so many of the traits of his are visible in this particular Pasuram. So, this is all about Bhagavatas as Bhagavan uh, in Bhagavad Gita says, Machitta Madgata Prana Bodayanta Parasparam Katayanta Stamam Nityam Tushyanticha Ramanticha, right? In the Dashamadhyaya, in the 10th chapter, 9th sloka, Bhagavan says, you know, all Bhagavan's devotees have their minds dedicated to Bhagavan. They are so absorbed in him. And they inspire one another mutually. They speak about him. They always think about him. And they are so contented and delighted by exchanging their discussions on Bhagavan. So that is exactly what Goda brings about here. It is not about enjoying Bhagavan by themselves. It is about enjoying Bhagavan with all the Bhagavatas, with all the devotees together, so that it is a synergistic impact. The enjoyment becomes multifold. It has no bounds when all the devotees are together enjoying Bhagavan. So that is the greatness that is brought about. In this Pasuram, starting from this Pasuram, all the way, all the devotees will be woken up by Goda and together everybody will start enjoying Bhagavan's Kalyana Gunas. So, we were looking at the first five Pasurams. Each of the Pasuram had many, many detailed meaning. And one very, very important question, which is usually put across, is answered by Goda. Typically, in fact, I have got this question myself many times, where people ask, is there only one God? Why should I worship the God, you know, as if he's having four hands? Um, should I always think of him as having Chanka, Chakra, Gada, Pushpa and you know in this particular form that we see in uh, Tirumala or uh, you know Sri Rangam and other places. Can't I have my own personal God? Can't I think of him the way I want to think? You know why should I worship God in one particular way? So this is a very very pertinent question which has been answered in a very detailed manner in several granthas and Bhagavan can be looked at in five different ways says our Shastras. The states are Para, Vyuha, Vibhava, Antaryami and Acha. Now, what Goda has beautifully done is, in the first five Pasurams, she has given the explanation of one of the state in each of the Pasurams. So beautifully. In the first Pasuram, for example, I said, Goda spoke about Narayanane Namakke Paritharuvan, right? So the ultimate Paramapadanada who is the beja of everything, who is the source of all the creation, he is the Paravasudeva 
and Goda explains about him in the very first Pasuram of Tirupavai. And what happened in the second Pasuram? Goda speaks about Parkadalul Payyatugindra Paraman, the Shirabdinatha Bhagavan. Now, Shirabdinatha Bhagavan, who is in the milky ocean, is the Vyuha Vasudeva, and we call it the Vyuha. So, that state of Bhagavan, where he is accessible to the Devas, where he is blessing a lot of celestial people, is the Vyuha Vatara of Bhagavan. So, Goda explains that as Parkadalul Payyatugindra Paraman. Now, the next state in which Bhagavan blesses all of us is when he takes avatharas here. He takes avatharas as Narasimha, Rama, Krishna, many, many, many forms, right? Unlimited number of avatharas Bhagavan takes. Now, she spoke about Ongi Ulagalanda Uttaman, the Trivikrama avatara of Bhagavan in the third Pasuram, which represents the Vibhava Rupa of Bhagavan. So, Bhagavan actually takes the incarnation and this is restricted to the time, the location and the Desha Kala Niyama is there for the Vibhava Avatara. Those who are there at that point of time in that particular location enjoyed Bhagavan as the Vibhava Avatara. Very, very interesting form of Bhagavan is the Antaryami Bhagavan where Bhagavan resides inside each one of us. Bhagavan is there as Antaryami, right? Now, this Antaryami is mentioned in the fourth Pasuram where she says, Adi Mare Kanna, you know, inside the Varuna Deva you are Antaryami. Inside each one of us Bhagavan is Antaryami, so Goda touched on that Rupa of Bhagavan also. And finally, the Archa Rupa, where Bhagavan is in the temples. So, he is standing in the temples, you know, his leg is aching, literally. But then he is waiting for us, waiting for us, waiting for us, expecting us to come and surrender to him. In Tirupati, if we look, Bhagavan shows his feet and he's been standing for such a long time. Our Alvar say, Nadanda Kalgal Nundavu, is your leg not aching, O Bhagavan? You walked for such a long distance. You walked all the way from Ayodhya to Sri Lanka, covering so many devotees across Bharatam, all the way to Sri Lanka. Is your leg not paining? And you're still standing as the Archa Murti in so many, so many temples. What can we do for your mercy, O Bhagavan? So, after waiting for several, several, several thousands of years, in some kshetras, in some temples, Bhagavan decides to sit. You know, looks like I have to wait for my devotees across different yugas. So, let me sit and wait for them. But then, in this materialistic world, in our rat race, we forget Bhagavan. And what do we do? We are like, okay, fine. We do what we do, let him wait, you know. So Bhagavan decides to sit down. And then he waits for yugas together that even that entire yuga change happens, still we are into our material pursuits. So Bhagavan decides to recline in some Divya Desas, you know. He, reside, he reclines, he says, okay, let me be in my yoga nidra and wait for you all. I just wish that my children come back to me, they surrender to me sometime, I will wait for you all. So Bhagavan reclines and still continues to wait for us. So that is the Archa Vigraha Murti, where Bhagavan is there in the temples waiting for us all the time. Our Acharyas give beautiful explanation of water to understand this concept of the five different states of Bhagavan. We can see water in terms of humidity around us. You know, we always speak about the percentage of humidity, which means that water is there around us even now, right? But can we consume that water? No. But it is there. The Para Bhagavan is there, but we can't consume that. You know, he is not accessible to us. He is in a very different form. So, Bhagavan becomes the Vyuha Murti 
who is there in the shirabdi where for some people he is accessible so bhagavan is like the water in the ocean but we still can't access that water so the vibhava avatara is like the rivers that are there so if we are there in the location where the rivers are going we could possibly use the water from the river the rivers keep flowing you know during that season there will be lot of water during some seasons there may not be water there may be perennial rivers there may not be so depending on whether we are there at that particular point of time whether we are close to the river desha kal depending on that we can access that now were we there during rama avatara were we there during krishna avatara were we there during narsimha avatara had we been there we would have enjoyed bhagavan but today we can only think of all those avatar leelas by the great scriptures our acharyas have given us be grateful to them but we've not had the anubhava first hand right antaryami bhagavan is like the well water which is there in our house itself we have a well in our house but what is the process before using the well water initially when the well is dug a lot of malina jala will come out right you will get you know uh, water mixed with all the clay and other things which is there in the soil we have to cleanse everything go deep inside only then we will start getting crystal clear water antaryami bhagavan is inside each one of us but to access that antaryami bhagavan we have to really clean the water go deep inside and then access bhagavan how many of us have a capacity to do that he is there but atma shuddhi is required only then we can go inside there but this archa vigraha murti bhagavan who is in the temple is there everywhere he is like you know the glass of water which we can access a drink he is there next to us he is there in different forms he is there in the rupa which we can admire he is there standing he is there sitting he is there lying down he is there in temples near us he is there in different different locations so wherever we are he is there for us so archa murti is so accessible that is why people say you know at least focus on archa because other things depends on your capacity depends on how much of effort you put for yourself but archa murti is there for you so all these five states of bhagavan was mentioned by goda in the first five pasurams and now she is starting the sixth pasuram and very very beautifully you know even explaining one state of bhagavan in one pasuram is a marathon effort but you know our little kid goda 5 years old has summarized all this five states in just one pasuram which is this pasuram which we are currently enjoying pullum silambinagan pullarayan kovil in this she has beautifully mentioned all the five states of bhagavan she uses the term vittinai which means see where she speaks about the ultimate paravasu deva who is the seed cause of the entire cosmic creation she speaks about vellattaravil tuil amarnda bhagavan who sits on the kshirabdi which is the vyuha avatara then she speaks about kallachagadam kalakkaliya kalochi peemulai nanjunda so she speaks about the leelas of bhagavan the bhutana samhara and the shakatasura samhara both these are done in the krishna avatara itself so she speaks about the leelas of krishna thereby mentioning the vibhava avatara of bhagavan and then she says all these great yogis ullatte kondu you know they have you reside in their heart where she speaks of the antaryami bhagavan pullarayan kovil directly she speaks about the temple in which bhagavan resides which is the archa murti so in one sloka itself all the five beautiful states of bhagavan are mentioned very very nicely where she has summarized it and given it to us you know as if uh, it is um, uh, hastamalaka you know people say that we can have a amla in our palm 
so easy for us to see consume enjoy everything right so she is given all the five states so that we never forget as a recap she is given it for us to remember she is given it in just one pasuram she is given it all by our little five year old goda and all tirvadigale sharanam so the pasuram starts as pullum silambina gaan the starting itself is beautiful here where our bhumi mata starts with nature she is in charge of every single thing in this earth right so we will see a lot of association where goda starts with nature and speaks about everything so many learnings and then concludes with the divinity where she draws parallels she connects everything and gives a holistic picture so here again she starts with pullum silabinagan you know the chipping of the birds now the girls are going together they are going to wake up the first of the sakis now as i told earlier the lakshmana bhava is there and the parata bhava is there some are aggressively waiting on when they can meet bhagavan and some are so confident of bhagavan that they are retiring happily they are sleeping now the group who are awake are now coming to wake up those who are you know in deep meditative contemplation of bhagavan's gunas goda now goes there and tells that girl look all of us have come you have to wake up and then she is saying that you know why did you all come so early and the girls are like no no seeing all of us you should know that it's already dawn so you should wake up <laughs> and then the girl inside says you girls never sleep so when you girls are awake it does not justify you know that it is dawn now at that situation goda and other friends are giving other evidences to say that you know it is dawn and the first of that is pullum silambinagan the birds are chipping now the girl inside says you know when you all keep disturbing the birds all the time you know you all keep reciting the name of bhagavan you all also ensure that even the birds in the vraja bhumi keep repeating his names so you don't allow the birds to sleep therefore the birds are actually chipping now this is not a reason where i can accept it now this pullum silambinagan does not say pull silambinagan you know it says pullum which means even the birds are beginning to chip now what is the purpose of putting the even here now we can understand it saying that you know uh, there is a examination in which many students have cleared it even this particular boy has passed when that statement comes we know that this boy usually fails even that boy is passed means the exam was really simple right so here the girls are saying pullum silaminagan even the birds have started chipping so what does goda communicate by using a even here it is that the birds are not subjected to any dharma anushthanas they don't have the nitya anushthanas which are supposed to be done by you know humans all of us are supposed to get up at a particular time do do our morning rituals do our prayers so many rules have been established for us but then birds have nothing like that so these duties of nitya karma are not given for the birds even those birds are getting up early so for us who can have a darshan of krishna be with him what do we say we have to you know how can we even think of sleeping at this important point of time so that is why she says pullum silambinagan you know so even the birds are actually woken up so we can't afford to sleep so because of this as i told earlier this seems to mention the father of goda uh, who is vishnu chitta who's compared to you know being the acharya who's actually giving us all these upadeshas so this entire pasuram our acharya say has been dedicated to periyalvar pullarayan kovil pullarayan kovil 
excellent usage of this word here. Pullarayan uh, basically means that it is the temple of Vishnu. Pull means bird. Here, the bird means Garuda because Garuda is the Vahana of Bhagavan. Arayan means king. Koval means temple. So, Pullarayan Koval basically means that, you know, this is the temple in which Garuda, who is the king of all the birds, you know, has his lord. <laughs> okay. Now, typically, can't we just call it as Bhagavan's temple? Why should Goda go around, uh, you know, this uh, circumlocution where she says like, you know, it is the temple of the Lord of the birds, the Lord of the Lord of the birds. Why all this going around, you know, uh, a big circle? So, Pullarayan Koval, what is the reason? It's a beautiful explanation um, where if we read Ramayana, Sita Mata would address Bhagavan Sri Rama as Lakshmana Purvaja, Lakshmana's elder brother. And when she has to address Lakshmana, she will call him as Ramanuja, Rama's Anuja. Now, why would Sita Pirati do this? Why would she call Bhagavan uh, as, you know, Lakshmana Purvaja? And why Lakshmana as Rama Anuja? In fact, uh, Bharata, uh, you know, when we have to address Rama, Bharata Graja is one way of addressing Bhagavan Rama. Why is all this done? And it's very common knowledge. You know, we can observe that when we want to address uh, Mata, Mahalakshmi, we call her as Vishnupatni. Bhagavan is addressed to as Shriyapati. Garuda is Vishnu Ratam. Bhagavan is Garuda Vahana. Uh, all these are very, very common ways we use the words, right? Now, why is this happening? Why are we addressing everything related to another person? If it's Bhagavan, devotees are associated. If it's devotees, then Bhagavan is associated. Why does this kind of a representation happen? Because Bhagavan loves being associated with his devotees. Bhagavan says, right, Aham Sacha Mama Priyaha. Whenever Bhagavan listens to the name of his devotees, he gets very, very happy. So we always try to connect Bhagavan to his bhaktas and call him. Similarly, bhaktas become so elated when their names are associated with Bhagavan, right? Therefore, bhaktas happiness is important. Bhagavan's happiness is important. Aham sacha mama priyaha is Bhagavan's own vakya. So we always associate Bhagavan and his devotees to each other when we speak. And in this particular pasuram, Goda has used the term pullarayan koval where she is brought out Garuda. And Vishnu Chitta, Goda's father, is supposed to be a Amsa of Garuda himself. And that is why this Pasuram, Elder say, is dedicated to her own father. Therefore, Garuda's greatness is brought about in this particular Pasuram. Now, what all has Garuda done? You know, is such an amazing thing. He is one great Nityasuri. Nityasuris are people who are always with Bhagavan who was there in two locations with Bhagavan. Very, very interesting. Think about it. Whenever we go to a temple, a Vishnu temple, we see a Dvaja before which we offer our salutations, right? We call it as the Dvijastamba or the Garuda Dvaja. So Garuda is on top of the Dvaja. Now, why did that happen? Uh, Garuda went to procure Amrita. So he wanted to save his mother and um, he goes, he procures Amrita, which is impossible for any normal mortal to procure. After procuring Amrita, we, we say, you know, uh, he's got Amrita Kalasa Hastaya, he, he's got Amrita in his hand. Typically, everybody yearns for this kind of Amrita because it gives us immortality, right? In spite of having Amrita in his hand, he did not even take a drop of it. 
a drop of it will give him immortality but garuda was not even interested in amrita he just went and he delivered as if he was just a messenger now bhagavan sees this he is so impressed that garuda was not interested in amrita and bhagavan says i want to give you a boon so garuda is asking bhagavan okay if you want to give me a boon i always want to be on top of your head <laughs> you know <laughs> this is the boon i want says garuda and bhagavan says tatastu so bhagavan permits garuda to be on top of him therefore garuda became bhagavan's dwaja where the umbrella you know the the flag is always on top of bhagavan so after this garuda says i also want to give you a boon ho oh bhagavan now bhagavan says okay great you give me a boon so garuda is now asking bhagavan what is the boon that you want and bhagavan says i want to be on top of you and garuda is like okay fine and there garuda became the vahana of bhagavan that is why bhagavan sits on top of garuda and garuda is the flag of bhagavan so garuda is above and below bhagavan so this is a great tattva where vedatma we say bhagavan i mean garuda is in the form of vedas himself where he is above bhagavan he is bhagavan is seated on it and you know he does all kinds of seva to bhagavan even when bhagavan takes the avataras so that kind of the great garuda his amsa is vishnu chitta who is goda devi's father so goda explains about bhagavan residing in this temple and she starts by explaining that you know garuda is the lord of all the birds so during krishna avatara this is a very very interesting uh, leela um we know about um, uh, asura by name virochana virochana's son goes to shirabdi the bhagavan who is residing in the milky ocean and when bhagavan was in yoga nidra he steals the beautiful vaira mukuta of bhagavan from there and he uh, comes off to buloka um not even buloka he goes off to the rasatala loka you know where um, his uh, kingdom was there so uh, garuda wants to you know go and take it back now bhagavan could have resisted this right why did bhagavan allow uh, uh, you know asura to come and take away his kreeda his mukuta many times bhagavan does all this in order to bring out the greatness of his devotees so in this case bhagavan wanted to bring out the greatness of garuda so he allowed you know this particular event to happen so uh garuda now goes he you know goes across all the lokas and um, uh, he goes to the particular location where this uh, crown is actually been placed and he uh, fights with virochana the demon and he gets back this beautiful crown and as he is collected this uh, vaira mukut and he is flying he sees that bhagavan the great shirabdinata is now this little boy playing in the vraja bhumi so he is aha now my bhagavan has taken this avatara and he is this little krishna staying here and think of the huge roopa bhagavan will have in the shirabdi and now this little krishna you know a tiny tot small little boy playing in the forest was a child right now garuda is so immersed in his bhakti that he places this huge mukuta which was fitting bhagavan in shirabdi on to the head of this little krishna now as this crown was placed this vaira mukuta it exactly fitted the little baby krishna the same crown which was in shirabdi fitted our little krishna as if it was custom made for this small little head of our little krishna now after the krishna avatara it is said that the same 
Vaira Mukuta can be seen in the Melkotai temple of Bhagavan, where Bhagavan still adorns it during the Brahmotsava. So that is this great Leela where Garuda offered his seva even during the Avatara where Krishna was here in the Vrajabhumi. So again, Goda brings this great uh, charitra here by addressing Bhagavan's great Vahana, Garuda. So we can see Sita Devi, Godha Mata, everybody associating devotees to Bhagavan in order to call out Bhagavan because Bhagavan, it gives so much of happiness to Bhagavan. So after that she says, Vellai vilichangin pereravam ketilayo. Can you hear this huge sound of the Shankanatha? So the Shankanatha is a beautiful sound where, you know, it is supposed to be the Pranavanatha of Bhagavan himself. So the sound of the Pranava, the air, Bhagavan's breath is supposed to be the Pranavanada. And the Pranavanada is the source for the entire creation itself. So Goda is asking, okay, you are not accepting that the chipping of the bird signifies morning. But can't you hear the great thunderous sound which is coming from the Shankanatha, which is a call for people to come into the temple? This is not the Shanka or uh, Bhagavan, you know, which he blows. This is the Shanka calling people to come into the temple. So, can you hear this beautiful sound of the um, Shankanatha? So, the Shankanatha has many, many, many explanations. In fact, the Panchajanya of Bhagavan has many beautiful explanations mentioned in different scriptures. So, Great uh, mentions across different scriptures are uh, there about Panchajanyam. Tam Panchajanyam Shashikoti Shubram Shankam Sadaham Sharanam Prapatye, right? So we always do the salutations. The Panchai, the Stotram is there in which we offer salutations to Panchajanya, which is supposed to resemble millions of moons shining simultaneously. That is the beauty of Panchajanya. So, Goda, in fact, has given 10 pasurams just on the beauty of Panchajanya and how much she adores Panchajanya in the Nachiya Tirumuri, which Natarajanji was mentioning earlier. So, a lot of beauty about Panchajanya are mentioned in our scriptures. Um, many uh, stotras. You know, uh, in fact, even in Bhagavad Gita, we know Madhava Pandavas Chaiva Divyo Shankau Pratadmatahu. Even in the um, uh, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan blows his Panchajanya, which is mentioned even in the very first Adhyaya, right? Panchajanyam Rishi Keshaha Devadattam Dananjaya. So Rishi Kesha Shanka is Panchajanyam. Sagosho Dhatarashranam Hridayani Vyadhariyat. Just by that sound, you know, all the putras of Dildrashtra, their heart actually started shaking in fear. So the sound of Panchajanya itself can create that kind of a fear where Panchajanya does not have to go to the other locations. Like Chakra or all other weapons has to go to the enemy's camp in order to do their job, right? But Panchajanya refuses to leave the hand of Bhagavan where just by being in his hand or being in his lips. That's all his work. So his work is done when his sound is heard by the enemies where they start to feel terrified because the sound of Panchajanya will do its job. So that is the greatest of Panchajanya that is mentioned. So Goda speaks about the great Panchajanya of Bhagavan here where Vellai Vili Changashi is. It's so white in color. It's so beautiful. The white here signifies the Sattva Guna. And the sound here signifies the Pranavakara or the Mangaladvani. So, Vellai Vilichangin Peraravam Ketali or the great thunderous sound of the Pranavakara Nata, which is blown inside Bhagavan's temple. Can't you hear that? It is filled with Sattva quality. So, please get up. So, she says, Pillai Hirandirai. Pillai here is mentioning, hey, little one, get up, you know. So here, 
pillai is used in a very very intelligent way where it is supposed to be that you are a child in bhagavan's anubhava you are so new to this bhagavan's experience she says now what is new to bhagavan's experience whenever a person thinks that being alone being in solitude is the right way to enjoy bhagavan it is considered as prathama parvanishta you know that is the first stage of being anchored or experiencing bhagavan so what is the charama parvanishta you know the ultimate stage is enjoying bhagavan along with all the devotees who are together immersed in the anubhava so without devotees the enjoyment is not same right so here pillai basically means that i know you are enjoying bhagavan but you are enjoying it by yourself so you are in the prathama parvanishta you are a pilla you are a child you are so new to bhagavan's anubhava come join all the bhagavatas be with all of us so that we can enjoy bhagavan together and you will never realize how beautiful it is you know it is like you can have milk separately you can taste sugar separately but when milk and sugar come together the taste the flavor is very different right so you have to know how beautiful it is to taste to feel bhagavan's anubhava along with all the devotees so pillai irindirai who oh, little one please get up you know what we are going to do peemulai nanjund we are going to enjoy that bhagavan who actually drank the poison out of that pay out of that asuri out of that putana so here goda touches on the putana mukti charitra of bhagwan this is also mentioned in the dashama skanda of shrimad bhagavata purana in the 6th adhyaya bhagwan little krishna turns 1 year you know he is still a baby kamsa having known that this little krishna having been born here is now in some other place keeps starts to send a lot of you know people who report to him the demons the asuras everybody are sent so that they can kill our baby krishna now putana decides to kill all the babies in different locations and she's been on the job she wherever she goes she starts killing babies and now she is come here she is come to gokula and she decides that she wants to kill our little krishna so she takes the form of a beautiful lady she had you know some bones where she could change her form into beautiful one and she could go anywhere so these were the two things that she had so now what she happened what happens is like you know she changes herself into such kind of a divine form where sukha brahma rishi he is a brahma rishi he explains that people who saw her thought that mahalakshmi goddess herself has come there her form looked that beautiful that she had donned herself with you know the mallippu the uh, lily flowers she adorned herself she was beautifully dressed with you know the earrings the smile and she looked so slender and nice that people were awed by her appearance and they were like who is this lady who is this lady and she pretended to be so affectionate that she attracted everybody in gokula she basically distracted everybody by her appearance and bhagavan is the antaryami of everyone he of course know why she has come and he was lying down as if he knew nothing now putana applied poison on herself and as if she was a caring mother she actually lifts the baby as if she is filled with so much of affection for the little one and she hugs him close to her chest and wants to feed the little baby rohini and yashoda mata are looking at this lady 
because bhagwan is there has mahalakshmi herself come who is this lady who is looking so beautiful so everybody is looking at her unsuspectingly she lifts the little bhagwan now bhagwan is lying there so innocently and for all of us who are born here what do we look forward to we look forward to the sparsha of bhagwan's feet right falling at his feet his feet touching us will be the greatest thing we can ever have in life now when this putana was lifting bhagwan this little baby krishna is beating his feet so little 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 and bhutana was carrying this baby while bhagwan was beating with his feet on putana and she starts feeding him now she is feeding poison but she is feeding it exclusively to bhagwan and she has taken the role of a mother because prior to this she was fed by yashoda mata right so bhagwan thinks that whoever is feeding him is actually his mother bhagwan in bhagavad gita says patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati right so what whatever you give me be it patram tulasi leaves pushpam any flower phalam fruits all these are given by bhagwan to us whatever we see in this nature is all bhagwan's gift to us right bhagwan says take the same thing and give it back to me the only thing that you have to add to it the flavoring that you have to do it is just add a little bit of bhakti yome bhaktya prayachati mix it with a little bit of bhakti give it to me if you are not able to give any of these toyam even if you give me water i will accept it just add the flavor to the water add your little bit of bhakti to it but what did bhutana do she did not add bhakti to it she instead added poison to it but the only thing that she did is she took the form as if she was her you know she was little krishna's mother so bhagwan accepted poison because it was given exclusively to him that too as if as if is a big as if she was his mother so bhagwan drank that poison also so when we give anything to bhagwan bhagwan takes it right so bhagwan drank the poison as he was drinking the poison he also drank off her life he took her life off and she cried the way she screamed is mentioned as if it was a thunder the entire world was shaking not just this loka the upper lokas the lower lokas everything started shivering as if there was one huge thunderous roar that was happening and when her atma was taken away from the sharira that beautiful slender wasted mahalakshmi kind of appearance with the beautiful lily all those vanished and she got back her original form which looked like one huge asuri and her body now became 12 miles long and that 12 miles because it extended so long actually went on top of many of the trees that was there many of the trees actually fell down one on top of the other like the domino effect a lot of things was actually crushed to ashes and the way her body is explained is like you know her nose looked like caves and many of her body parts looked like rocks her eyes itself looked like a well and you know she looked really really scary once she got back her original form and the people there were so scared looking at this devilish form oh my god what happened who is this lady why did she come here why did you know she actually do i mean why did she feed little krishna what is happening to our krishna so everybody are so worried now in this huge form of hers our little krishna a one year old child is now lying on top of it as if he knows nothing after drinking her life off now everybody in rajabhumi 
for them little krishna is their life right so they quickly climb that krishna yashoda mata brings back this little krishna all of them all what they know is everything pertaining to the cow so what they do they take the gomutram and they give a bath to bhagwan thinking that the gomutra will protect bhagwan they apply gomayam on bhagwan in different parts of his body ishoda mata quickly repeats the 12 names of bhagwan vishnu saying that let bhagwan vishnu protect this part let bhagwan vishnu protect that part so she does a kavacha a raksha to bhagwan all the gopikas rohini and everybody actually sing a patu kavacha to bhagwan think about it bhagwan is protected all of them by destroying putana right otherwise all the little children in that area would have you know been killed by her now they all are requesting that bhagwan ultimate bhagwan to protect this little krishna who is bhagwan and they are saying you know singing patu 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 if we look at shrimad bhagavata purana the dashama skanta the sixth adhyaya in it shlokas 22 to 29 is such a beautiful anubhava where all these gopikas along with rohini and yashoda sing a patu to our little krishna they are saying ho oh, let that keshava protect your heart ho oh little krishna let that hari protect everything that is in front of you let him be in front of you and protect you let that rishi kesa who is in charge of all the indriyas protect all your sense organs ho oh little krishna let that narayana protect your prana let him protect your breath and they say that govinda is there whenever this little child starts to play let that govinda protect this little krishna how beautiful can it be right now whenever little children go out to play we can teach them to repeat the name of govinda because govinda is supposed to be the name which we recite when we are playing when we are outdoors so when little children play instead of telling them be safe you know tell them keep repeating the name of govinda govinda will take care of you when you play and when he sleeps they say let ramapati protect our little krishna when krishna is sleeping so we always remember bhagwan as ramapati shriyapati along with his concert we think of bhagwan before we go to bed before we retire to bed we visualize bhagwan as divya dampati as ramapati as madhava before we actually go to bed and there is another beautiful usage which is about prishni garba they are saying let prishni garba protect you if we look at bhagavata purana as soon as bhagwan is born bhagwan speaks to uh, his mother devaki and his father vasudeva you know as a child the moment he is born he speaks to them where he says even in your previous birth i was born to you you were prishni ho mate and i was born to you therefore i was given the name as prishni garba says bhagwan krishna and here all these gopikas are saying let prishni garba protect you what a beautiful anubhava so they are asking krishna to protect himself without knowing that the same prishni garba is this prishni garba such a beautiful anubhava is there in the putana charitra and sukabrahma rishi tells that all of those you know in this palastuti he says that when we listen to this putana charitra with so much of bhakti then the palastuti is that we will start falling in love with krishna our love to krishna will get enhanced and a lot of interpretations for the symbolism of putana charitra are also mentioned where the poison which putana applied to herself is compared to the agnana which each of us have now putana exhibits her agnana and what does bhagwan do bhagwan touches her first with his feet the moment bhagwan touches her with her with his feet bhagwan is pretending as if he does not know anything right he is like one little baby putana thinks that she knows that this is krishna and she has to kill him 
but she really does not know who this great bhagavan is bhagavan knows everything he is pretending as if he is little child and he touches putana with his feet and what happens all her agnana goes off and then what happens she takes her original form she dies she you know destroys all the trees that is there takes this huge form and after she died they could not even you know uh, burn her to ashes because she was so huge that they had to really cut her before they could do the antima samskar and it said that when she was burnt a great fragrance spread to all places now people are like she was a demness she was a demon basically sent by kamsa and how can her body have great positive fragrance how is that possible because when bhagavan touched her when she, he started considering her as his mother and drank her milk though it was poisoned all her agnana was gone and she even her sarira is actually become purified therefore great fragrance spread to all places it is mentioned so agnana is gone and even she got mukti so usually the great acharyas mention the putana charitra as putana's mukti not as putana samhara so bhagavan gave mukti to her because she pretended though she pretended she pretended to be a mother right so she he bhagavan started treating her as a mother now think about the vrajabhumi where every gopika considered bhagavan as their everything all the elder gopika thought that bhagavan was their own child right think of rohini think of yashoda amma what kind of love and affection they were pouring out and what kind of reciprocation bhagavan would have done to them that is why our alvars especially periyalvar goda's father considers bhagavan as his own little child you know he calls them for uh, calls little krishna to bath he feeds little krishna he does everything from the eshodha bhava to this krishna so that is the love and affection so we can consider bhagavan as our little krishna and the moment bhagavan thinks of us as eshoda as his mata you know bhagavan does everything even if we do not have that kind of the bhakti which eshoda mata had in fact he would feed up that kind of bhakti himself so this great putana charitra will actually help us get more fond of bhagavan says sukabrahma rishi so goda here says that pemulai nanjund you know bhagavan drank that poison which was fed to him by putana after that what did he do kallachagadam kalakkaliya kalochi after that you know all this happened within you know um, bhagavan's childhood itself where bhagavan now started turning around okay uh, in fact i don't even think he was one year old when he was four months or something bhagavan actually started turning around and that was celebrated by eshoda mata you know with a lot of pomp and show because till now they had not taken bhagwan out of their house and they wanted to protect bhagwan because he was a little baby but our little krishna on the day he was born he actually crossed the river yamuna all the way from mathura to vrajabhumi right oruti mahanai pirandu oru ravil oruti mahanai ulithu valara he crossed the yamuna river on the day he was born but eshoda mata thinks that you know she is protecting this little bhagwan so after he started turning around she did a celebration where she brought him outside now she gave him a good bath early in the morning with all oil and all other sacred things and bhagwan now became so tired because he had this oil bath he wanted to sleep so the baby started sleeping even without having milk so there was a huge cart on top of the cart eshoda mata had placed a lot of things which are required for that day celebrations and other rituals you know huge pots of ghee and butter and other things to be distributed to all those who visit the place everything had been kept on top of the cart and there was a lot of shade below the cart 
So she had prepared a nice bed for Bhagavan and she had placed this little baby on the cart. Now Bhagavan is deep asleep, so Mata has gone inside to you know, speak to all the visitors who've come to bless the child. A lot of Veda mantras have been uh, recited since morning. So she is doing her part of hospitality to everybody who's come there. Now our little baby did not have his milk, right? So he's starting to feel hungry. He's waking up. Now he starts to, you know, uh, show his voice a little bit, asking for milk. Ah, he says. Now, Mata is far away looking at all the guests that she is not able to hear the little child Krishna. Now our little kid is getting really angry that Mata has not given him milk. So, you know, with all that anger, he just hits his little leg. Now he's already had this milk from Putana, right? So he's got all the strength. <laughs> no, with that strength, he's hitting this cart. And what happened? Kalla Chagadam, that cart was actually Shakatasura, a demon who was in the form of this huge cart on which so many items which were heavy were placed. And this little baby who's just started to turn hits with his beautiful lotus-like petal feet. And that little tender hit was sufficient that the entire cart broke down drastically that even the dust particles of the cart was not seen. So everything just goes off and, you know, everything falls off. People rush there listening to that sound. What happened? What happened? What happened? This little Krishna hurt. How can this break? What is the situation that's happening? And then the boys who were there were saying, no, no, Krishna actually hit it with this feet because he was crying and, you know, the cart broke. People are not able to believe how can this happen, you know, how can this little Krishna's feet burn, you know, uh, you don't even see any semblance of the cart at this point as if this was a cart. How can this baby hit so hard? It's impossible, say all the elders. The children say that, no, 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 we saw him hitting it. And Kalla Chagadam Udaita. Goda repeats this beautiful experience of Bhagavan hitting the Shakatasura even in the 24th Pasuram where she says, because of this you became famous everywhere that your greatness would have reached even Kamsa, you know, Kallat Chagadam Udaita. You know, she says that your greatness, what would we speak about your greatness, oh Bhagavan? It spread in all directions because as a baby, you hit this great Shakata. So here in this Pasuram she says, so when Bhagavan was uh, a little baby, he actually drank Putana's milk. She gave her mukti. She uh, He actually did the Shakata Suravadam just by, you know, pushing his feet, wanting uh, milk from his mother. So that Bhagavan, Now, when we all step out of our house for a particular activity, after we complete the activity, we go back to the house, right? Similarly, Bhagavan came from Sri Rabdi in order to do all the avatara leelas, paritranaya sadhuna, vinashaya chadushkritam. After doing all this, what did he do? He went back. He went back and sat down in his Sri Rabdi from where he came for all these things. Vittinai. He is the source of everything. In Gajendra Moksha Charitra, which is mentioned in the 8th Skanda, the 24th chapter of Srimad Bhagavata Purana, Gajendra calls out to Bhagavan as Adi Bijaya. You are the primordial seed of everything, says Gajendra. Akila Karanaya, Adbuda Karanaya, Nishkaranaya, all these are adjectives which Gajendra used to Bhagavan. He did not define Bhagavan, he just used different adjectives which would suit the primordial being, the ultimate cause of all the Srishti. And that is when Bhagavan took the avatara of Hari and protected Gajendra, right? So here, Vith means seed. Who is the seed of all the creation 
says Goda exactly the way Gajendra had actually said. So, our Acharyas say that we have to understand beautiful things when we look at this in entirety. Now, Vellattaravil tuilaman the vitti nai ullatth kond munivargalum yogigalum mella yelundh ariyandra pereravum. Now, this Bhagavan is there in the heart of all the yogis and munis, is what is mentioned here. And they all get up in the morning and recite the Harinama Smarana, says Goda. Now, what is happening here? They all get up in the morning and say Harinama Smarana. So, if they get up in the morning, it means that they should have retired to bed earlier on. So, what did they do when they retire is the question. Now, I was mentioning that when all the Gopikas were doing Patu, they were trying to protect Bhagavan. What did they say? We have to remember Ramapati or Madhava when we retire to bed, right? So, when we actually go to bed, we have to remember Bhagavan along with Mata. And we, you know, being in their feet, we being protected by their feet, we have to retire to the bed. In fact, Goda is now reminding us of this everyday routine which each of us should do. Shira Sagara Taranga Shikara Sara Tarakita Charu Murtaye Bogi Boga Shayani a Shayini Madhavaya Madhuvid Vijay Namaha. This is the sloka which we have to remember when we retire to the bed every day. So, this is from Mukundamala, where there is a beautiful visualization of Bhagavan, of the Sri Ranga Kshetra, who is resting on his Adisesha. So, now visualize Bhagavan in the Shirabdi. The beautiful milky waves, you know, keep coming and going, right? Think of the waves, but these waves are made of milk. Now, some of these beautiful droplets of milk touch the body of Bhagavan and Mata. Now what happens is each of these beautiful drop of milk look like the beautiful white stars, the specks. And these stars on the body of Bhagavan are shining so beautifully. Seeing this Bhagavan along with Mata, you know, um, Kura Talwar who's authored Mukundamala is like, filled with ecstasy and cries out, Oh my God, what kind of a beauty is this? And he prays to this Madhava. Madhavaya Madhavid Vishenamaha. That Madhava who slayed the Madhu, the Asura Madhu, you know, I am worshipping you. So Madhava means, Ma is Mata Mahalakshmi. Madhava is along with Mata Mahalakshmi, Bhagavan who is residing in the Shirabdi. So Alvar is seeing him as the Sri Ranganatha and worshipping him. Now, this particular sloka of Madhava is reminded to us by our Goda here. So she says, all the rishis and munis are getting up, which means that they were sleeping. So what would have they done when they were sleeping? They would have remembered that Bhagavan, Vellattaravil Tuilamanda. So that Bhagavan, who is in the Kshirabdi, in the Kshirabdi, they are sitting. So that Bhagavan is now in the heart of all these munis, yogis. They would have recited this Madhavaya Madhavijay Namaha and then they would have retired to the bed. So all of you, remember when you sleep, you have to repeat the name of Bhagavan when we go to bed. And after that, this Gajendra Moksha Charitra, where Bhagavan is the Adi Bija, he is the root of everything. Now, when should we remember this name of Hari? This is the very first name with which we have to get up in that everyday morning. Ullat kund munivar galum yogi galum. The munis and yogis remember this Bhagavan in their heart who is filling them as Antaryami Bhagavan. 
Now, whenever this is mentioned, we cannot forget the great devotee Prahlada. Prahlada, as we all know, was a little child who was born to a Asura by name Hiranyakashibu. This great devotee always remembered Bhagavan Hari in every single act of his. His heart was filled with Hari, 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 Hari Nama Chintanam. His father could not tolerate that his Asura child was so devoted to Hari that he wanted to destroy him, come what may. So in several ways, he tried to put an end to this great devotee, Prahlada. And one such incident was to throw this little child from top of the mountain. Prahlada was always in his Namaskara Mudra, in his Anjali Mudra, where he was worshipping Bhagavan Hari. The only exception that is seen is when he was actually thrown from the mountain. What did our little Praklada do when he was thrown from the mountain? Instead of having his Anjali Mudra, instead of praying to Bhagavan, he had his palm close to his heart. And then he was reciting Bhagavan's name. Now our elders discuss, why did Praklada, you know, have his hand close to his bosom? Why was his having his hand in his heart instead of having the Anjali Mudra? Anjali Mudra is important, right? So why did Praklada not do that in this situation? The explanation to this is so bhavatmaka, is so touching, where it is mentioned that all of us have Bhagavan in our Hridaya, right? Bhagavan is our Antaryami. So when this little Praklada was thrown from the mountain, Praklada was worried that his Antaryami should not be disturbed. No harm should be caused to the Bhagavan who is residing in, inside him. So with this little small palm of Praklada, Praklada was protecting the Antaryami Bhagavan. So even when he was pushed from the mountain, he did not worry about what would happen to him. He instead wanted to protect the Bhagavan who was residing inside him. That was his kind of love, affection, bhakti that he had towards Bhagavan. So he had this little hand as if that little hand is going to protect Bhagavan. So he was protecting Bhagavan Hari who was his Antaryami even when he was pushed from the mountain. And what did Bhagavan do in turn? Bhagavan received this baby Praklada with his lotus palms without, you know, not even a semblance of harm happening to Praklada. Bhagavan protected Praklada. So that is the mutual love and affection that the devotees and Bhagavan have towards each other. So Ullatthukund Munivargalum Yogigalum, all these Munis and Yogis, what do they do? They have this Bhagavan Inside them, they contemplate on Bhagavan. Parasara Bhatta, a great Acharya who wrote the Vyakyana for the entire Vishnu Sahasranama, he used to decorate himself beautifully whenever he went to a temple to pray to Bhagavan. Now, many of his disciples were surprised. Why is our Acharya decorating himself, you know, with so much of uh, ornaments and sandal paste and wearing, you know, all the silk robes, everything? Because Sarira is, you know, something which we do not really worry about. Sarira would go. The Atma is what is important, right? So why is the Acharya doing like this? So when they questioned the Acharya, the Acharya said that, you know, yes, Sarira is uh, despicable, definitely. But then, Antaryami Bhagavan is residing here. So we have to respect the temple in which Bhagavan resides. So that has to be with the best of the ornaments and sandalwood paste and everything which, you know, shows that Bhagavan is residing there. So that kind of importance should be given to the place where Bhagavan resides, said the Acharya. So Bhagavan is the Antaryami because of which we are treating our Sarira as the abode of the Antaryami. So think about how much of importance we should give to every morsel of food that goes into our body. What kind of importance we should give to every word that comes out of our body because 
Bhagavan is Antaryami. Everything, Mano Va Kayam, what we say, what we do, what we think, should be in line with the Antaryami Bhagavan being within us, right? That was the way Prahlada Alwar behaved. That was the way the great Parasara Bhatta Acharya behaved. And that is the role model which all of us have to follow. So Goda says, munivar kalum yogi kalum. So all these great munis and yogis have that Bhagavan inside them that this Madhava is the Bhagavan with which they retire to the bed. Now when they are getting up, what they are going to do? They are going to say, Milla yelindu hari yandra pera ravam. They are going to get up slowly. Why are they going to get up slowly? Just like how Prakhlada Alwar did not want any jerk on the Antaryami Bhagavan. Therefore, he protected Bhagavan with his palm, right? Therefore, we should get up slowly without causing any shake to the Antaryami Bhagavan. When women are pregnant, you know, they will be advised not to get up with a jerk. They have to turn to one side and get up slowly, right? So all of us, when we get up in the morning, are supposed to get up like that because all of us are pregnant with Bhagavan inside us all the time. Bhagavan is inside each one of us. So we should get up the way pregnant women usually get up without giving any kind of shake to the Antaryami Bhagavan who is residing inside us. So Goda here says, Mella Yarindu. So get up slowly so that there is no disturbance to the Bhagavan who is inside. After that, what should you do? Hari andra pera ravam. You should recite Harir Hara. Harir Harihi, Harir Harihi, Harir Harihi, Harihi loudly so that this Nama Sankirtana can be heard by everybody who is around. Even if they do not say Nama Sankirtana by themselves, let them get the palan of listening to the Hari Nama Sankirtana. So when you get up in the morning, say Hari 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 seven times loudly so that everybody will get the benefit of listening to the Nama Sankirtana. So, what will happen is, Harar Harati Papani. Whatever is the Papa that we've done, Harar Harati, the name Hari will actually snatch off all the Papas and you will be able to start the day afresh. Because your earlier sin is now taken off, that you can start it with a new leaf. Therefore, start your day with Harinama Sankirtana. Mella yirindu Hari endra pereravam. Therefore, tell this Hari, you know, in a loud way. So, at this point of time, it is very important for us to remember the Gajendra Moksha Charitra. Gajendra Moksha Charitra happened in the Trikuta Parvata, where a king by name Indra Dhyumna, having been cursed by Agastya Maharishi, had to take the form of an elephant. There was a Gandharva simultaneously, who, having been cursed by a Rishi by name Devala, had to take the form of a crocodile. Now, both of them met in a place called Trikuta Parvata, where there was a river, beautiful surroundings, filled with nature, a lot of Gandharvas were there. So, this crocodile was actually a Huhu Gandharva and the Indra Dhyumna was a great king who was a Raja Rishi who was practicing Bhakti Yoga. Now, when both of them met, the crocodile knew that his only way to come out of this curse was by Bhagavata Kataksha because he has done some negative thing to a Bhagavata Devala Maharishi. So, he wanted to fall at the feet of a Bhagavata, hold tightly the feet of a Bhagavata so that he can have his curse, you know, a relief from his curse. Now, without knowing what is going to happen, this elephant happily comes with his family to enjoy the waters of this beautiful Tataka. So he's playing with all his family members. You know, hundreds of elephants have come to that water area. Now, when he's trying to enjoy, this crocodile holds on to the feet of Gajendra, a very, very powerful elephant who was considered as a Mrigendra himself. 
Now, the Gandharva knows that this is his only resort. He's not going to leave the feet of Gajendra. Gajendra tries to free himself thinking that he can take care of himself. His family and friends can take care of um, him. Nothing seems to work. Thousand long years, he tries to protect himself. His family tries to protect him. Nothing works. Finally, because of Bhagavad Kataksha, Gajendra remembers that he has to call the ultimate Bhagavan. And that is when he says, Adi Bijaya, Nishkaranaya, Akila Karanaya, everything, right? And at that point, Bhagavan comes in such a speed. Garuda is there, Mata Devi is there, Mahalakshmi is there. So Bhagavan comes and protects this elephant as if it's the most important task of Bhagavan. So because the sharper vimochana of the Gandharva can happen only with his discus, Bhagavan helps the discus go and you know give the sharper vimochana to the crocodile. The crocodile immediately gets the divine form of a Gandharva. He does pradakshana to Bhagavan, falls at Bhagavan's feet and goes to his Gandharva loka. All the Brahmadi Devas who are there are now reciting the Samaveda there and saying Jeho, Jeho, Jeho to Bhagavan. At that point of time, our Acharyas do this great Anubhava where Bhagavan, you know, looks at Gajendra so affectionately. You know, when you are in such a pain, you remembered to call me. And Bhagavan, you know, was faster than the Mano Vega. He came there so quickly. You know, Gajam, by the time a person could even say this word, elephant, Gajam, Bhagavan was there. That's why when somebody comes really fast, well decked and all, people say, Jam, you've come like Jam, you know. So that was the speed with which Bhagavan appeared there. And he was filled with so much of motherly affection to Gajendra that he looks at Gajendra. Bhagavan removes his uttariyam, you know, his top vastra. Just as how a little mother would do first aid to her child who is hurt, Bhagavan takes his own vastra. He blows his air through his mouth. You know, the warm hair of Bhagavan is blown to his Uttariyam, his vastra, and Bhagavan places that vastra on the feet of Gajendra where Gajendra was hurt. Gajendra, in turn, not even worrying about his hurt, takes this beautiful lotus from the Tadaga and offers that in salutation to Bhagavan. Gajendra does not have physical power at all because he's been struggling for thousand years. But seeing Bhagavan, he offers this lotus to Bhagavan. Now, Bhagavan heals the feet of Gajendra. Bhagavan changes, blesses Gajendra and changes his form to such a divine form that he starts to resemble Bhagavan. In um, the Ashtama Skanda, it is mentioned that now Gajendra, who was Indra Dhyumna, got the form like Bhagavan with four hands. He had a Pitambara like Bhagavan. He now became one of the great, you know, attendants of Bhagavan himself, you know. So, Gajendra was given mukti by Bhagavan. This is a great charitra of Bhagavan. Listening to that itself is a sumahat punyam, say our acharyas. So, punya means we get, you know, a lot of good benefits when we listen or say this charitra. Mahat punya means great level of punya would accrue to us. This charitra is mentioned as sumahat punya, which means that, you know, something greater than the great punya will accrue to us when we listen to this charitra. So, Goda reminds us saying that this avatara which Bhagavan took is the Hari avatara. So, what you have to do is the, the first thing in the morning is remember to recite Hari and Pera Ramam. Remember this Gajendra charitra because that is what Bhagavan is told in Srimad Bhagavatam. He says, whoever remembers this charitra, hey Gajendra, hey Indradyumna, the first thing in the morning, they should remember this Trikota Parvata, they should remember this water, they should remember everything which is surrounding in this area. They should remember my form with Shanka, Chakra, Gada, Padma, along with my concert, along with Garuda. 
they should remember my devotees like Pratlada, Narada and so many other devotees. They should remember Matsya Kurma Ityadi avataras of mine. They should remember you. They should remember me. They should remember this avatara. When they remember all these as a Pratasmaraniya Amsha, you know, I will ensure the Sadgati for all of them, says Bhagavan, because this elephant, in spite of being in such situation, did not ask for his own moksha, right? He said that whoever worship you should have a Sadgati. So Bhagavan granted that as a blessing to Gajendra. So what we have to do is the first thing in the morning, we have to remember this great Gajendra Moksha Charitra. Therefore, Hariendra Peraravam Ullam Puhundra Kulandra says Andar. You know, let this great episode get into our hearts. Our heart will feel really cooled down when we listen to this charitra. And all our earlier papas will be scrapped off and we can start the day afresh. So slowly get up, you know, like the way the pregnant women would do because all of us are pregnant with Bhagavan inside us. He's the Antaryami. So this hurry, hurry, hurry would be the first thing that we have to say and we have to get up. Now there is one Swarasthi Amsha for this entire Pasuram. You know, Goda has started this Pasuram by saying, Pullum Silambi Nagan Pullarayan Kovil. She starts with the chipping of the birds as a proof to saying that it is morning. And then she concludes that, you know, if you're not accepting the chipping of the birds, now listen, even the Munis and the Yogis have started reciting the name Hari Hari. Is that not sufficient for you to know that, you know, it's morning hours, so it's time for you to wake up and join us? You know, that's the kind of uh, discussion that happens here, right? Now, our Acharyas ask a question here. Whenever we want to give a proof, will we not give the most important thing first and lesser important things later? The Munis and the Yogi should have been the starting of the Pasuram. And then she could have gone on to explaining about the birds, right? Will somebody say like, you know, uh, the birds are there, the munis are also there. That's not the right way, right? The munis are there, the birds are also there is okay. So why did Andal choose a different chronology to explain things here? This is a question our Acharyas put. And they give a beautiful Samadhana here where they quote Valmiki Ramayana itself. In Valmiki Ramayana, there is the Vibhishana Sharanagati Gatta, which is mentioned, where Vibhishana comes to surrender to Bhagavan. When that is happening, there is a huge discussion between all the uh, uh, Vanaras and, uh, you know, Sugriva, Hanuman, everybody uh, discuss different things which happens in the uh, Yuddha Kanda. So, when that discussion is going on, whether they should accept Vibhishana or not, after listening to everybody, Bhagavan Sri Rama tells what his opinion is. So he speaks about a Dao, a story of a Dao, which sacrificed its own life and it gives its own flesh to a hunter, you know, saying that the importance of a person who comes as refuge and the importance of hospitality is very, very important where it sacrifices itself for the sake of, um, you know, hospitality and to show the importance of surrender. So Bhagavan uh, Rama explains about that and then says that this is what is mentioned by Kandu Maharishi also, who is the son of the Kanva Maharishi. And they say that, you know, whenever a person surrenders, if we are in a position to accept a surrender and do the needful, we have to do it. So I will go by whatever is mentioned by uh, the Kandu Maharishi, says Bhagavan Rama. So Bhagavan Rama has first given the example of the Tao and then of the Kandu Maharishi. Why? Because the bird actually sacrificed its life while Kandu Maharishi mentioned about the importance of it. One actually did it, the other, you know, explained about it. So practically doing it is so important is signified here. Here, all the birds 
were actually chipping. You know, the sound of the birds, irrespective of what happens, the birds actually wake up on time. But rishis, you know, because they are in deep contemplation, sometimes they might be in so much of dhyana that their timings may also change. But birds, irrespective of the situations, do get up, right? So Goda has taken the same sequence which Bhagavan Rama had taken, where the birds are mentioned initially and the rishis are mentioned later, like how Valmiki Maharishi has handled the example given by Bhagavan Sri Rama, taking the dough initially and the Kandu Maharishi at a later time. This is it, another beautiful Anupava which our Acharya share with us. So those were the great details of this Pasura. And I'll tell you uh, Vasana, would you like to um, recite the Pullum Thilambanga? I'll repeat after you. Yes, ma'am. Pullum Shilam Binakan. Pullum Shilam Binakan. Pullarayam Koyil. Ullarayan koil Vellai vilisangin Vellai vilisangin Eraravam ketilayo Eraravam ketilayo Vellai yehundirai Pillai Yerindirai Pehi Mulay Nanjundu Pehi Mulay Nanjundu Kaila Chakatam Kaila Chakatam Kalakadia Kalochi Kalakariya Kalochi Villataravil Villataravil Tujila Marnda Vitinai Tujila Marnda Vitinai Ullatikundu Ullat the Kunde Muni Verhalum Yogi Galum Muni Verhalum Yogi Galum Mille Yerundu Mille Yerundu Ariendre Peraravam Ariendra Peraravam Ullam Puhundu Ullam Puhundu Kulirndi Lur Yempavai Kulirndi Lur Yempavai Ullam Puhundu Ullam Puhundu Kulirndi Lur Yempavai Kulirndi Lur Yempavai Hari 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 Andal Tiruvadigale Sharanam Andal Tiruvadigale Sharanam